I tend to plan my reviews several weeks in advance. I mean, I have to make sure that I'm not trying to introduce two different brightening serums at the same time and in general prevent my face from falling off. And if you ever over exfoliated your face, you know that face falling off is a very accurate description of what happens. It means, of course, that I also plan my purchases several weeks in advance and that is hard on my wallet. All the pretty parcels arriving make up for it though and it also makes it easier to lump everything together in one huge haul video. After all, you need to see which reviews you can expect over an upcoming month, don't you think? Hi, I'm Dr. Anne. I'm a medical doctor with a passion for skincare that works. On this channel, we explore the science behind skin and do quick reviews, so you learn to pick exactly these products that work for your individual skin concern. So if this is something you're interested in, please consider subscribing and ring the notification bell. Sunscreens. I wear sunscreen all year round, but of course use more of it in the summer as I do not tend to reapply in the colder months. If you have any specific questions in regard to sunscreen, let me point you to this playlist here where I answer the most common questions. I do have indoors and outdoors as well as summer and winter sunscreens, depending on if I expect to get a lot of sun exposure, for example, on a hike or if I'm spending the majority of my day at my desk. In the summer my skin is more oily, in the winter I want more hydration and all that combined leads to me having several different to pick from. The latest additions are the HelioCare 360 degree water gel SPF 50 which came recommended on Instagram and seems to be a great water resistant option for oily skins and the Garnier Ombre Solaire Anti-Age Super UV SPF 50 which seems better suited for more mature skins. While the Garnier option is readily available here in Germany at the drugstore I had to buy HelioCare from an online pharmacy as it doesn't seem to be in stores. The next option is one that I had shipped over from the UK. It is the Ultraviolet Supreme Screen Hydrating Facial Sunscreen SPF 50 Plus. The brand is actually Australian and comes with high praise from Michelle aka Lab Muffin Beauty Science, which is why I ordered the corresponding lip sunscreen, the Ultraviolet Sheen Screen Hydrating Lip Balm as well. So far I only used one by Labello, but to be honest it's neither a pleasant color nor texture nor does it offer a really high protection factor. Let's see if I like the version from Ultraviolet better. I also have one product that comes from even further away and even though the package was due to arrive yesterday it has not arrived yet. If you ever ask again why I do not like ordering from YesStyle, the shipping to Germany always takes forever. That being said, I am awaiting the Thank You Farmer Sun Protection Light Sun Essence SPF 50, one of the Korean sunscreens that did pass independent testing earlier this year and a crowd favorite. I am hoping to replace my winter indoor favorites that failed the testing with that, so wish me luck. Geek and Gorgeous and some Yes Style. Back in January I received my first order of the Geek and Gorgeous Seaglow Serum and a few other bits from the brand and as you can tell from my reviews I fell hard for it. So I ordered three more of the Seaglo serum, one for each of my sisters and one that was meant for me but that my mother already claimed and their retinol serum both in 0.05 and 0.1% strength, both of which will after testing period go to each of my sisters as I use tretinoin for my adult acne. To make up for my mother claiming Seaglo, I added the Timeless Skincare 20% Vitamin C and E Ferulic Acid Serum to the Yes Style order. I figured I'd have to pay shipping anyway, so I might as well make the most of it. Just like the sunscreen, it has not arrived yet, and the same is true for the Dr. G R.E.D. Blemish Clear Soothing Cream. I first heard of that on Odile Monod's YouTube channel. If you don't know her, she really knows a lot about Korean beauty, and that's the topic that I'm trying to learn more about. She recommended this cream. I am experimenting with different Centella products. The shipping was already paid for, you see. I basically had to add it to my basket. The Inkeless Skincare. I mentioned before that I ordered stuff for my sisters, both of which approached me in April asking for a tailored skincare routine, which I was of course happy to provide. You see, my skin is oily and I have adult acne. The second has normal skin that leans towards being sensitive and wants to address signs of premature aging and the youngest refused to wear sunscreen for the longest time and smokes, which is why for her hyperpigmentation is the main concern. So the second one gets the before mentioned vitamin C, retinol in the lower concentration, the inky list niacinamide serum and the ordinary buffet plus copper peptides. 
The youngest one also gets vitamin C, retinol in the higher concentration, the inkylist niacinamide, and the inkylist tranexamic acid. And yes, I will try to talk them into appearing here on the channel with me so they can provide feedback, but no promises. PR or gifted products. I have yet another vitamin C product to show you, the Purito Pure Vitamin C Serum. It contains 5% ascorbic acid, which is pretty low for my personal vitamin C preference, but it might be helpful if your skin is sensitive and reacts to higher concentrations. On first impressions, the serum is pretty rich, borderline oily, but I will use it more often and then report back. Purito also sent over their Plane Scorlane 100 oil. Scorlane is an oil present in the skin, which is why it's often recommended for irritated skin or skin with a damaged barrier function. To be honest, I rarely use face oils anymore, but maybe this one will make me fall back in love again. If not on my face, it says multi-purpose, so the possibilities are endless. Something that will probably not make an appearance here in form of a review is this lovely selection of Temple Spa products. So many samples that I can't wait to experiment with, as so far I have only tried one of their face masks, if I remember correctly. Hair care. You know I'm a fan of Olaplex, and after finally getting my hair done again in April, I decided it was time to try the new additions to their line. Number six the Bond Smoother a Styling Cream. Number seven, the Bonding Oil. Not going to lie, my first thought was that is really tiny for the price. And number eight, the Bond Intense Moisture Mask. These will probably take the longest to review, so don't expect a video before fall comes around. Makeup. Yes, I do occasionally still buy makeup. A mascara, the L'Oreal Air Volume, which is exactly the one that I like, but right now still a little too wet. Then the Essie Nail Polish in Free to Roam that I already showed you in my favorite. It needs two coats and lasts a week with minor chipping. And then, of course, a red lipstick. This is a matte red, one from the MAC Black Cherry Collection, and it's called Moody Bloom. Did I need another red lipstick? Absolutely not. But it is pretty and I wanted it, and that is what ultimately counts. What did you buy that you didn't need? Tell me in the comments below. I'm going to link to more videos on the screen now that I think you might enjoy, and I'm going to see you all very soon with another one. Bye!